There was an earthquake in Japan. The estimated magnitude, according to the USGS, was 7.5. In Japan, on the other hand, they estimate it to be 7.6. The initial estimates can actually vary a little, but in any case, we're talking of a very violent earthquake. Connected to this earthquake, there have also been tsunami waves with a maximum height of 120 centimeters. Unfortunately, there have also been victims. Filming now, it's 9.30 p.m., Jan 2, 2024. Death toll seems to have risen to 48, unfortunately. Many of you have been asking the reason behind Japan's high seismic activity, reaching out to me through various channels, such as Instagram, seeking an explanation for the frequency and intensity of earthquakes in the region. In this video, I want to help you understand the nature of Japan from a geological perspective. This will allow us to grasp everything else. Quick parenthesis before we start. If you like this type of video where we delve almost in real time into what happens in the world, as in this case with the violent earthquake in Japan, subscribe to the channel. It's absurd. According to YouTube statistics, 50% of the viewers who regularly watch our videos are not subscribed to our channel. Of course, I thank those of you who already subscribe to our channel and special thanks for the patience to listen to this quick parenthesis. I invite everyone else to do the same. It doesn't cost you anything, but for us who do scientific publication, it makes the difference. Thank you and let's get back to the video. First of all, it was not a single earthquake, but rather a sequence of seismic events. Actually, the most violent shock with a magnitude of 7.5 according to USGS was preceded by a shock with a magnitude of 5.7 and was followed by numerous smaller shocks in the hours that followed. Not so small really considering there was also a 6.2 shock at 4.18 p.m. local time. To understand the origin of these violent earthquakes in Japan, in my opinion, it is important to understand the geology of Japan at a tectonic, macrotectonic level. When observed from space, Japan is easily recognizable due to its distinct arched shape. When using Google Maps, I highly recommend viewing it in satellite mode. The curved shape you see is the direct result of the clash and collision between tectonic plates. In this region of the world, there are four plates involved. The North American plate, the Eurasian plate, the Philippine plate, and the Pacific plate. So in terms of tectonics, it's all very complex, However, simplifying, we can say that we're talking of a subduction zone. When two plates collide, the denser one slips beneath the other and descends into the Earth's mantle. In jargon, we refer to it as subduction. In this particular case, it is the Pacific plate that slips underneath the North American one. In reality, it's more complex because the Philippine plate subducts beneath the Eurasian plate. But let's not get into too much detail. The significant thing to know is that the plate which subducts at a specific point, due to a series of reasons, can melt. This means that a portion of the rock undergoes melting, resulting in the formation of magma. The magma initially ascends, giving rise to submarine volcanoes that, as they grow, have the potential to emerge on the surface, thereby creating volcanic islands. These volcanic islands, in turn, have the potential to come together and combine, forming new emerged land and resulting in the creation of an arch shape such as Japan. Guys, Japan is a volcanic arc. That's right, folks. Japan is a perfect example to understand what we learn in science books when studying plate tectonics. A plate subducts, creating an oceanic trench, a depression like the Mariana Trench, which is the deepest. There are also many other trenches. In fact, in front of Japan, there is a long oceanic trench. This can be seen very clearly from the satellite. That's why I told you to use satellite mode earlier. In parallel to the oceanic trench lies the island arc. In other words, Japan. Behind Japan, at the back of Japan, a back arc basin is formed. The word explains it very well. It is a depression, a basin that is behind the arch, the back arch. This depression in this instance is the Sea of Japan. So the Sea of Japan, from a geological perspective, is a back arc basin. This back arc basin is positioned between the volcanic arc and the continent, which, in this particular case, is the Eurasian plate. This compressive tectonic context, that is, where two or more plates collide, makes Japan an area with a high risk of seismic activity. 
Not only volcanic, but also seismic. The epicenter of the earthquake on January 1st, 2024 is located about 40 km northeast of Anamizu on the Noto Peninsula. The hypocenter has been approximated at a depth of approximately 10 km. When an earthquake takes place, it signifies that a fault has been reactivated. In this instance, it is a system of compressive faults. In informal language, we refer to them as thrust faults. In Japan, there are thousands and thousands of them. And the one that has reactivated in this case has a northeast-southwest orientation. Let's say like Japan itself, not by chance. And this can also be seen from the arrangement of the epicenters. You see they are all nicely aligned in the northeast-southwest direction. What is found here is a system of rather shallow faults. In fact, the hypocenter that was recorded was about 10 kilometers away. 10 kilometers is considered a very shallow depth for an earthquake. The fault in question, or rather the fault system in question, actually continues even at sea, and that is precisely the reason why there was also a destructive tsunami event that occurred. The majority of tsunamis are typically initiated by powerful underwater earthquakes in the oceanic regions. In essence, when a fault reactivates, the rocks fracture, leading to the formation of a fracture and two blocks. One of these blocks moves in relation to the other, creating a step on the seabed. If the fault extends into the sea, this step abruptly displaces all the water, giving rise to abnormal waves on the surface, which are commonly known as tsunamis. These tsunamis are generated by the sudden movement of the step that is created, causing the water to be forcefully moved and resulting in the formation of large destructive waves. In this particular instance, it is estimated that the step was between 1 and 3 meters, which is quite significant. Luckily, the tsunami was contained as the biggest waves measured 120 centimeters. The point is that when there are earthquakes with such a high magnitude, 7.5, and they are very superficial, like this one, unfortunately the surface damage can be enormous. Why? That's because you have to think of it like a bomb. That is, the magnitude is like the power of a bomb. If this bomb is buried under my feet one meter deep and explodes, I'll probably blow up. If this exact bomb with the same power is placed 1,000 meters deep, if it explodes, I wouldn't even notice. The more superficial it is, the more damage there will be. That said, we could discuss numerous aspects of Japan from a geological perspective. If there are any aspects that interest you, kindly let me know so we can possibly conduct further insights. Guys, I hope this video has been informative in understanding why numerous earthquakes occur in Japan and why they are highly severe in nature. Thank you for following until the end and I'll see you next time always here on Geopop Everyday Science.